First speaker tonight is going to be Michael Stephen Smith, who's co-host of WBAI's Law and Order, co-editor and contributor to the new book, Imagine Living in a Socialist USA. There you go. Co-author Che Guevara and the FBI, the U.S. political dossier on the Latin American Revolutionary. Some great and important work there. So please let's listen to Michael Smith. Uh, I was asked to speak briefly, really as a prelude to what Jeff's going to talk about. I'm going to talk about our lost liberties prior to the revelations that Snowden gave us, uh, what happened in the uh, decades since 9-11. On September 1st, 1939, we know what happened on that date. What happened? Cliff? Second World War started. And the poet W.H. Auden sat in a bar right over here on 42nd Street, and he wrote a poem called September 1st, 1939, and he called the preceding decade a low, dishonest decade. And you could say the same thing about the preceding uh, decade from this date backwards and I want to talk about the accumulation of things that I would refer to as our lost liberties particularly the First Amendment speech association the Fourth Amendment the right of privacy the Fifth Amendment which is really a doctrine of fairness due process and the Sixth Amendment uh, right to counsel and right to be free of cruel and unusual punishment The dishonesty started with Bush, who Chris Hedges describes as a man who's both morally and intellectually challenged, with Bush saying that the Twin Towers were bombed because, quote, they hate us for our freedoms. Never was it allowed a discussion about why this crime was committed that there were American troops in Saudi Arabia next to Mecca and Medina, says Bin Laden. Uh, the uh, deaths of some 600,000 children due to sanctions in Iraq, and America's support for Israel against the Arabs. That discussion was uh, quashed. Susan Sontag tried to raise it, and she got creamed. Uh, that was the first big lie. Second big lie, of course, was weapons of mass destruction and the illegal war against Iraq. Uh, the third big lie was picked up by Obama, who said he was for change, you can believe it. What happened subsequent to 9-11? Two fundamental building blocks. The first was Congress passing the authorization for the use of military force on September 18th, a week after. and then. Two months after that, on November 18th, was uh, Bush's military order number one. And these are the building blocks for our subsequent lost liberties. And I'm going to explain what both of them were. The authorization to use military force declared war against terrorism. It declared war against individuals and organizations. So it transposed what was a crime, a massive crime, but nonetheless a crime, into an act of war. So there was that asymmetry uh, to it. And it allowed the executive huge powers that the executive otherwise wouldn't have. The military order number one, well, I'll, I'll read you what Michael Ratner wrote about it, because this is really, I don't want to sound over dramatic. I was accused of that. I edited a book of Bill Kunstler's writings and speeches, and Michael wrote the introduction, and we called it the Emerging Police State. This is back in 2003. We got a lot of heat for it. We said, you're overstating the case. It's not an emerging police state. But we stuck with the title. And <coughs> Michael wrote this about military order number one. First, the president claimed the authority to capture, kidnap, or otherwise arrest any non-citizen. It was later extended to citizen. Anywhere in the world, including the United States, 
whom the president believed was involved in international terrorism and hold them forever without any charges, proceedings, or trial. Amazing. A person could be held forever just because the president wanted them so held. He took on the power to disappear people. Second, the order did provide that if, and that's a crucial word here, if, if the person was tried, and there never need to be a trial, but if the person was tried, such trials were to be held by special ad hoc courts called military commissions. These commissions had no resemblance to regular trial courts. The entire proceeding could take place in secret, without evidence, <coughs> with evidence from torture, and those found guilty could be executed in secret. Third, to the extent those imprisoned or tried could be determined and lawyers found, no court could hear any case. This order embodies within it the violations of fundamental rights we are facing today indefinite detention without trial, Guantanamo, secret sites, special trials, and disappearances. Well, Daniel Ellsberg called it a coup. Clark Kissinger refined it, I think miraculously, calling it a rolling coup. And that's exactly what rolled out. And I'm going to give you some of the elements of that coup. The doctrine of global supremacy and the advocacy of preemptive war. Libya is the latest example. Refusal to recognize international law or the applicability of the Geneva Accords. Roundup of immigrants after 9-11, thousands of them. The Patriot Act, which authorized massive government spying. Domestic employment of the military as law enforcement. This is a violation of the Posse Comitatus Act of 1878. This was a real breakthrough. I guess they don't trust the police. They want to bring in the military to enforce the law. Secret deportation hearings. Seizure of citizens as enemy combatants. Massive secret violations of the FISA Act. Wiretaps that Jeff's going to talk about. Issuance of secret administrative warrants of all kinds for records under the Patriot Act. Suppression of Muslim charities. Secret sneak and peek searches under the Patriot Act classification of most government records, a reversal of the idea that government should be transparent, the people's lives private. We're supposed to be a democracy where the papers that the government has are our papers, and it's supposed to be our government. The government's reversed that totally, um, and uh, Bush reversed it. His attorney general enforced it. You can't get the kind of stuff under the uh, FOIA request I used to be able to get. Assertion of executive supremacy through signing statements. Doctrine of the unitary executive, elevating the executive branch above Congress and the judiciary. The 2007 John Warner National Defense Act, which allows the president to use the National Guard from one state and deploy them in another state without the permission of the governors of either state. So now they don't trust the cops, now they've got the National Guard. The assertion of state secrets privilege. There was a very dramatic uh, trial out in San Francisco where the plaintiff brought a case against a CIA front airline which flew the plaintiff to Egypt where he was tortured, had his testicles sliced with a razor. He brought a tort suit and the Obama administration moved to dismiss the suit on the basis of state secrets. And the judge couldn't believe it. He said, am I hearing you right? Aren't you from a new administration? Isn't this the Obama administration? And you're making this motion? And they said yes. And the case was thrown out. Two more items. One is the creation of fusion centers, which fuse the local police with the, fe with the FBI. And they're all over the country now, and they coordinate things. They also coordinate it with private uh, businesses, especially here in New York with Wall Street, so that the cops and uh, Wall Street executives share a command center downtown. Um, and they monitor th these thousands of surveillance cameras that they've set up in New York. And an example of the coordination of this kind of police repression is the simultaneously shutting down of a number of Occupy Wall Street sites using the same tactics on the same night. That was coordinated by Homeland Security and the FBI. 
Obama conveniently left Washington so that he wouldn't be blamed for that. To conclude, Gibbon concluded in, in his book about the decline of the Roman Empire that you can't have democracy at home and imperialism abroad. And that when the troops crossed the Rubicon River and came into Rome, <coughs> that was it. And uh, we're, we're there now. Um, the only way to fight back is to use the first and the fourth and the fifth and the sixth <coughs> amendment. Uh, and if enough of us use them, uh, there's nothing they can do about it. But they have set up, probably in anticipation, or at least a number of the more far-seen ruling class figures understand that there are great class battles ahead of us because this economy has totally changed from what it was 40 years ago. And they've set up an apparatus uh, to try to suppress what they see coming down the road. Thank you. <laughs>